uh, there are major barriers actually to um, um, to allow everyone to uh, benefit from this technology, right? I'm not uh, talking here about the user side, but maybe the development side. So really few companies, a few startups, and even few academic labs are really able to mastering um, this technology and provide state-of-the-art results. There are many barriers indeed, right? One is the data barrier. Big companies have all the data, but uh, you know, small startups and academic lab, they do not have it. So this is a big challenge. Uh, and I'm, I'm pretty, I'm a bit more optimistic than a few years ago these days, because we are also seeing some kind of growing uh, open data sets like uh, Common Voice, just to mention one, but this is still a big challenge. The other big challenge that we are facing is computational resources, right? So the deep learning is going towards, you know, uh, training models, which are bigger and bigger, which are trained on a lot of data. And the combination of the two things requires a uh, no, lot, a lot of computational resources that um, only few players can have. And they were the, the things that we, we even don't see, right? The end of this trend, because every time we have a bigger model, we have better performance. And that's, uh, that's something, uh, according to many people, we are still far away from reaching kind of saturation point on that. So that's a pretty important issue. The other uh, barrier that I see is coding, is codes, because most of the code that, you know, uh, you, you, you find in, I don't know, Amazon Alexa and all these kind of things are proprietary code. So uh, it's not free, it's not open. Uh, with speech train, we would like to address this, um, this um, barrier and kind of break down this wall and allow everyone to train. Uh, and, to, to train and, and to eventually develop uh, conversational AI technologies without uh, at least uh, this barrier. So what is SpeechBrain? SpeechBrain is an open source, all-in-one conversational toolkit based on PyTorch. So our goal is to make, uh, to do our best to make conversational AI available to everyone. And in more uh, part in particular, you can use SpeechBrain for research to speed up research and development of speech, audio, and language processing techniques. So we try to develop something which is flexible, uh, easy to use, modular, efficient, and hopefully with a good documentation. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, conversational AI requires combining different technologies. Like, for instance, you know, usually the pipeline is very long. The pipeline of the technology that you have to involve is like pretty long. So you may have kind of voice activity detection to figure out which part of the input signal are speech and which part are non-speech. Then you may want to have a kind of keyword spotting system that you know detects some kind of keywords like, uh, okay, Google or Alexa or whatever. Um, after that, you may want to perform a speech recognition and transcribe whatever is a third by the users. Then you may want to have a spoken language understanding block that, you know, try to extract the semantic of the request from the user. Then you can have a dialogue system. And finally, kind of speech synthesis method that creates, that gives you the reply of your request. So this is complex, but the good thing is that most of this pipeline is already implemented with speech train. And for the other parts like dialogue and speech synthesis, there, are, uh, there, there is work in progress. So one peculiarity of speech train is that we designed it from scratch to support multiple language, speech and language processing tasks. So um, differently from other toolkits, uh, our goal was that. So we, we wanted something that already suitable for um, kind of considering the complexity of a conversational AI system. Today, you know, building a kind of single toolkit for multiple tasks is much easier than in the past because all these tasks here are strongly interconnected. Why? These tasks are, are strongly interconnected because they share the same underlying technology, which is deep learning. 
So when I started working in this field was like 10 years, 10, 10 years ago and uh, with my master degree and the technology was very different, right? For speech recognition, the dominant technology was still based on, on Gaussian mixer models and hidden Markov models. For um, speech enhancement, speech separation, the dominant technology was signal processing. For voice activity detection, we were kind of computing manual features like pitch, uh, probability of voicing, energy threshold, etc. So, but now it's different, right? Because all we can implement all these blocks with deep learning. And it's, it, it is now possible, right, to have this idea, this, this toolkit for multiple tasks. And we call that toolkit speech brain because we will like something that like our brain is able to recognize speech, understand its context, understand some meta information regarding speech, such as language, emotion, speakers. And finally, we would like something uh, to, to start up a conversation with humans. So there are a few advantages, right? Uh, if, in having a kind of single flexible and multitask toolkit. The first is that you don't have to jump from one toolkit to another. You know, every toolkit has um, its own uh, code styles, standards, programming languages, and it's very time consuming for you, you know, adapting uh, to different, uh, uh, to different uh, toolkits. And then it's not just that, but you can, if you would like to create complex pipeline, you have to integrate kind of different toolkits. Uh, and this might be challenging. So with SpeechBrain, we have a single toolkit with the same standards, the same thing, and we made everything uh, to make uh, the combination of these technologies easier. And having a single toolkit may also be good for exploring things like uh, you know transfer learning or joint training. Imagine that we have this big pipeline of computations of blocks of modules and it, all this pipeline is fully differentiable. It can back propagate the gradient through all this big chain of computation. This is possible, right? Uh, if you have a single toolkit and all the blocks are neural networks, like what we would like to do in speech frame. What makes this challenging is that it's true that now it's possible to have a single toolkit for multiple tasks, but you know, in practice, every task has its own specificity and, you know, Creating a single toolkit, uh, think about like data and data preparation, data IO operation, et cetera. And creating a single toolkit is, um, is, is st still, still challenging. I think and creating something really flexible and elegant uh, was uh, our, uh, our main goal in the first part of the project. Anyway, we will figure out, I will, I will tell you later what we have done there. Um, what you can do with speech print? As I mentioned, we have different technologies. You can do uh, speech recognition. And here we have uh, uh, different um, techniques that we support. I don't know, CDC, other end transducers, sequence to sequence attention based models with the RNN transformers. We have um, uh, beam search, beam search coupled with the um, language modular scoring, et cetera, many, many things. So we basically have all the technology to build a state-of-the-art speech recognizer. Uh, we also have speech announcement, which is about uh, you know removing a noise from an input speech recording. And here we have kind of innovative solu solutions that are called metric gain plus and mimic loss. Uh, we also have um, speech separation, which is about you know when two or more speakers are speaking at the same time, uh, separate them in two different tracks. Um, and here we also have models like Conformer, Dual Path RNN, and Decepformer, which is pretty impressive. Uh, we also have technology for spoken language understanding. Spoken language understanding is you know when you would like to map an input sequence, uh, not into the transcriptions, but into the semantic representation directly. So this is spoken language understanding. And we have several recipes for that. We have speaker recognition, uh, but also we have speaker diarization, which is about uh, you know detecting within a recording who spoke when. And this is um, yeah technology here for for that like spectral clustering, just to mention one. Uh, but you can do much more. Uh, right now, uh, we have uh, um, recipes for speech translation, language modeling, language identification. We will see an example later. 
uh, sound classification, graphing to phoneme, multi microphone signal processing, and also recently I'm working a lot on EEG um, signal processing because you know there are many similarities between speech and EEG, and we are trying to extend the toolkit also to process uh, this kind of brain signals. Um, there is a lot of work there is um, going on, text to speech, speech synthesis, the one I mentioned before, um, and also music generation. Uh, we have some pull requests that we would like to, to merge at some point, and here um, your expertise could be, could be really welcome. Uh, then we also have uh, tried to in, in, in improve the, the, the search part, or at least integrate our um, search part with final state transducer. Uh, which allows you to have a kind of constraint search, uh, which can be useful in some application scenarios. Um, with speech train, uh, we have many um, many recipes, many training recipes on popular data sets that achieves competitive or state of the art um, performance. Here you can see some numbers. You can see also the reference paper that I will mention later. Um, but yeah, yeah, you can see that we have. Um, uh, with libre speech, we reach 1.9 um, award rate on the test clean, which is the basically expected number on libre speech. Uh, also on TMIT, we have a very low phone MR, phone MR rate when we, especially when we use the um, self supervised pre-training. But we have many other tasks. Uh, we have uh, speaker verification, an equal error rate like uh, less than one percent, which makes Speech train that and um, the open source toolkit, which with, with the lowest um, results here. So in the literature, we can find even better number these days, but they are not releasing the code. While in speech print, everything is um, open and transparent. Uh, we have baseline for speaker diagnosis, pretty good. We have the state of the art in um, in um, speech enhancement with the, the voice bank data set with the metric gun plus system, and finally. We have the state of the art also in popular speech separation benchmarks, uh, where we reach um, a kind of a signal to noise ratio <coughs> more, um, which is larger than 20 dB, which is pretty impressive. We will see examples later. So some some um, design principle that we use. First of all, we would like everything to be uh, very permissive. I mean, um, used by everyone. Companies uh, uh, can use it. Uh, academic lab can use it. So we release it with uh, a very permissive license. I should do. Uh, we would like, uh, since this is an academically driven project, uh, we would like it to be accessible to a large uh, use base, which includes uh, students and practitioner. And we would like to make uh, the toolkit not just good for research or development but also good for educational purposes as well we will we tried to do our best to create something which is simple and modular we created different modules that are easy to that that implement hopefully meaningful functionalities and are easy to interconnect with each other we try to have a kind of lean <coughs> software stack speech run is just built on top of pytorch and there isn't nothing in the middle that add uh, far abstraction levels. And we try also to uh, minimize the number of external dependencies such that we have all the best technology in our hands and we can keep um, maintaining it and improving it uh, easier, easily. Um, uh, we also have a kind of strong commitment for, um, for uh, replicability. So I mentioned we are academic, academic so we are a strong commitment for open, transparent, and reproducible research, and this is this is what we would like to do with speech training. We would like uh, uh, we will encourage everyone to share uh, their their model within speech brain. Uh, and on our side, what we do is to you know for all the recipes we we have, release the training recipes, release the code, release the pre-training model, and release all the logs that allow the community to replicate our numbers. But really, ideally, I think there is value in um, kind of replicable uh, research. And we will encourage users to share their research results with speech train as well. So how can you train a model? So uh, we have many recipes and many things and, you know, but in all the cases, 
to train the model, you just need two files. One is called, uh, one is the hyperparameter file, which is this one. And the other one is the experiment file, that is this one. The hyperparameter file, you know, of course reports the hyperparameters, but it is not a plain list of hyperparameter. So plain list of hyperparameters is pretty bad because uh, you don't know uh, who is using this hyperparameter and where. Uh, with speed, in Spitron, we designed this kind of new paradigm called hyperpyaml, where instead we always have a connection, a visible connection between the hyperparameter and the function or class that is using it. Like for instance, here you have um, nmels, and you see that nmels 30 is used by this class here. This is very good because it, it makes everything uh, more transparent and um, easier to debug. So there is always a connection between the function or class using the hyperparameter and the parameter itself. The other big advantage of hyperpyaml is that you know when you load this file here, you can take the, this opportunity to initialize the classes that you find here. So the, the user don't have to initialize the classes themselves. We do it for, for you. And this saves a lot of you know, boilerplate code in the, um, in, the, in, the, in the experiment file. So the hyperparameter file basically define the hyperparameters and the objects using it. Then you have a train.py that instead uh, it, um, figure out, like uh, specifies how these objects should be connected together to implement the desired functionality. To make that simpler, we also design a special class called brain class, which is a trainer that you know helps you, uh, helps you with uh, all the typical step, steps that we uh, need for training a neural network. And we will see maybe an example later, but with um, uh, this, uh, um, this file, uh, what we are trying to do is to expose as much as possible all the computations that users will modify the most. So instead, you know, of, for instance, we will expose the forward computation, the compute objective computation, and all the data IO processing computation. So to access this computation, you don't have to go somewhere, you don't, no, nobody knows where in the code, you can just uh, uh, see them visible uh, in the train.py directly. So I think the combination of this two is pretty powerful and make everything um, pretty clean and easy to use. Um, but beyond providing some kind of um, training recipes, we also provide pre-trained models coupled with um, easy inference function. Uh, in this moment, we are using hugging phase for that. Uh, we have 31 protein models, and you can use them uh, just using three lines of code. Like if you would like to do speech recognition, uh, and you know, just transcribe one file. You know, yeah, three lines. The same for speaker verification, speech separation, and all the other tasks that we are supporting. Um, tell you, let me, let me tell you something about the history of this project. I, we start, I started this project uh, like um, in February, 2020, uh, exactly the same month where the pandemic started to spread around the world. Uh, and so we were forced to work remotely, but that turned out to be to work very well. I and the development team worked so hard on, on this project. And in March, 2021, we were able to, um, to release the first version of Speech Brain publicly. And now speechrun is growing very fast. We are community is pretty excited about this project. We are every um, we are growing. We are adding new features, and um, uh, things are, are are pretty 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 exciting days. So let me share some numbers. Uh, now we have eighteen core developers, sixty eight contributors, three dot three k stars on GitHub in only um, eight months. Uh, more than five hundred forks, seventy three training recipes for. 23 data sets, uh, 31 models on hugging phase. Um, and, but the, the thing that I'm most, most proud of is that you know there are contributor, contributors around all the world. So you know I can when I joke, I, I say, okay, 
speech training is it's uh, it's like the old British Empire, right? Where the sun never sets. <laughs> this is a joke, but it's actually true, right? Because when I go to, the, to bed, you know, someone, um, I don't know, Taiwan is, wakes up and contributes to the project. Then there are Chinese people, Indian people, European guys, and finally we'll wake up again and see <laughs> the, uh, what, what happened uh, during my night. So it's, uh, it's pretty exciting and we are structured to work in this way, um, re remote, to work remotely with a large international team. Um, okay, so uh, do you have some question at this point? Otherwise I will start with a kind of guided tour of the, uh of the um of speech frame okay um there are no questions let me see where i can start uh, okay okay let me start from maybe the website okay Okay, so this is the, the website of speech train. Let me actually, if there is a chat, uh, I can. Okay, uh, just type um, if you would like to follow my my my, my things. Just type speech train uh, in, in in Google, and you will immediately find a website. So this is the website we with some simply summarize some characteristics uh, of speech brain we have you know here is the github code we will see later this cross channel which we use uh, for communicating with uh, the community we have this hugging face repository uh we have the tutorials here so we we have many of them we will see some uh, and you also have the all the documentation so as for the code I can click here, just a GitHub repository. Uh, this is the, the main code. Um, if you are here, uh, please start as, uh, our project because it, um, it helps us uh, gaining visibility. So just, just, just start it You're, and, and this will help us if you appreciate our efforts for the community. Um, here, what we are doing, well, all the main libraries are here in the under the speech brain folder find everything the like data io management uh, neural networks um, signal processing things etc um, then you have the training recipes are here in recipes as you can see here i, I don't know for instance libre speech asr uh, sec to sec you have um, you know train.py which is the the file i mentioned um, I previously mentioned, and also the hyperparameters file that you know are needed to run an experiment. The hyperparameter files are, you know, as mentioned before, are not just plain list of hyperparameters, but there is always a connection between uh, the hyperparameters and the class using it. Uh, and then you have the train.py, which you know um, combines these uh, these modules. And you can see here, this is a pretty complex system because it's speech recognition, or multitask, CTC plus sequence to sequence learning. There is also uh, beam search, language model combination. So pretty challenge, pretty, I mean, complete and, um, uh, and uh, you know, competitive also in system. And you can see just in like, just 300 lines, you, you can specify all the computations and well there's no time here to go in the detail but you can see that you know all the computations like uh, uh, for data processing are visible like here reading data processing labels all the computations for you know forward computations that goes from the signal to the output probability are clearly specified here directly like uh, you can see our data augmentation feature extraction, normalization, encoding, etc. You also find the compute objective computations that goes from the prediction to the loss. And all these kind of things are, are already specified here and you can modify them here without jumping in um, 
other parts of the code. So yeah, that's, I mean, all the recipes are consistent with this kind of um, structure. Then there are many other things like templates, which are uh, kind of recipes that help you using SpeechBrain on your data and your own task. Uh, we have tons of tests, etc. But basically, if you are uh, interested in the speech print, please um, please take a look at the code. And you know we are very active here. You can see uh, community, etc. We are we are discussing possible issues, uh, improvements uh, uh, with the community here in, in GitHub or um, the discourse platform that we have. You find it in our website here um okay let me let me see okay the documentation is something we, we do consider a lot like you can find the documentation here in the website like uh, i don't know for all functions basically let's say uh speech brain convolutional neural network for each function or class we try to do our best to document everything in a kind of consistent way for, uh, like for instance, in this sync conv, uh, we have a short description of the function, short description of the parameters, and very importantly, we also have um, kind of working example that allow users to better understand what this a class or function is is doing. So we are pretty consistent on that. This is uh, kind of very aligned to the um, good documentation provided by PyTorch. And we were very consistent within SpeechFriend as well, because I think especially this is very important, especially the running example uh, helps a developer a lot understanding what's going on. Um, yes, uh, let me see. Yeah. Here you can find all the tutorials. There are tutorials, I don't know, for many topics. Like, I don't know, if you would like to know how to set up a speech recognizer from scratch, just go here, speech announcement and go here. And you can find many, many tutorials, which are, again, not good for only to learn uh, what is speech friend and how it works, but are more in general um, good for education. Because as a professor, we would like, uh, I would like really to, to stress this part we are not a company and education is uh, one of our important missions so let me see just share you something like i don't know here there are basic tutorials here is one of the tutorial that we we have like what you can do with speech brain where we we show some of the functionalities you can take a look here but basically here, what we do is to show how to use the pre-trained model that we, we have in um, SpeechBrain. Like here, as you can see, with just three lines uh, of code, you can download a pre-trained model from this source, and you can perform speech recognition just specifying the wave path of that. So, and The birch canoe slid on the smooth planks. This is the input signal, and this is the uh, corresponding transcription. We are also targeting many languages, like this is French, for instance. The same, you have three lines. The only difference is that you have different model, different model, and different file, of course. And that's it. Mon chien est le plus beau. Uh, we have Italian. This is me, like. Buongiorno a tutti e benvenuti a bordo. Just correct. But we have also other languages, like Mandarin. I, I checked this is correct. But uh, you know, with speech brain, you can really create languages even if you don't know the language. You just need an input sequence and output sequence, and speech brain will map it into the the um, we'll learn the mapping right between the two. So we also develop uh, some kind of baseline for new languages like Kinyarwanda. Kinyarwanda is, is a language uh, spoken in Rwanda. It's not a new language, but no one in the team uh, was able to speak this language. But we were able to, um, you know, uh, create a pretty good system for that as well. Which, which is actually uh, correct. Uh, we also have, you know, not, not just speech recognition, we have speech separation. 
So in speech separation, we start with this signal here. My father has revealed the culprit's name. You can hear here two voices, right? Just two speech signals. My father has revealed the culprit's name. Then we feed it into our subformer, which is the best system we have now for speech separation. And the output of the system is that. My father has revealed the culprit's name. The birch new slid on the... So you separate, right, the two signals. Uh, pretty well. So these are not the labels, right? These are actually the separated signals. We started from the mixture and we separated them uh, pretty well. Uh, then you have many other things, um, you know, speaker verification. Um, but yeah, you can find it if you want in, um, in, in the other tutorials. I can also share with you maybe, um, yeah, here there is, uh, all the models are in our a hugging face repository there are many of them um you can see like uh, i don't know one nice thing is that in some cases like for in this one um you have um, um you have the model you have uh, instruction how to use it uh, but also you have a kind of api uh that uh, um, allow you to you know record something from the browser so let me, this is a, a kind of language identification system. So the input is a short audio clip um, and the output is the, hopefully the, the, the correct language of that. So let me try to see, okay, here it takes a little bit of time because it has to download, but let me see if I can. Buongiorno a tutti, potreste dirmi che lingua sto parlando? Grazie mille, arrivederci. So the first time here, as I mentioned, um, something gets stuck. So I don't know, I hope not, not this time, but um, the first time is downloading the model, okay? Uh, and then from the, the first time on, it, it's faster. So look at here, we are downloading the model. And uh, um, after a while, you will have the prediction for uh, this signal here. Buongiorno a tutti, potreste dirmi che lingua sto parlando? Grazie mille, arrivederci. It takes time to, to download the model, so uh, maybe uh, we, can, um, we can go ahead with the presentation and the very final part, have fun with that, because the first, the first time it takes a lot of time, but after the first time, it's super fast. Um, yes. So, you know, speech training is not the only, uh, the only toolkit for, for doing speech processing, audio processing. There are others. Uh, many of them are good toolkits. One could be uh, Fairsec. Fairsec uh, is a kind of Facebook toolkit. It's mainly uh, designed for sequence-to-sequence -sequence processing. Uh, and while speech training is more, um, it's it, it just not sequence-to-sequence uh, -sequence processing, but it's also uh, uses um, support other tasks like regression tasks for speech announcement, classification tasks for uh, speaker recognition, clustering, and also signal processing. Another related toolkit here, let me sh um, share the screen again, is um, Nemo. Uh, Nemo is a very good toolkit done by NVIDIA. Um, it has this kind of industrial uh, orientation is good. It does, uh, the main difference with speech is that it has this kind of industrial orientation, while uh, speech brain is more biased towards research and easy prototyping and education. But um, I mean, also Nemo is a very good toolkit. Uh, the most similar one is actually um, ESPNet. ESPNet um, uh, and speech brain are both academically driven, uh, which is good and bad. Uh, academically driven is good because we are not biased by any industrial interest. So we are not, uh, you know, um, you know, promoting a model just because it's in the interest of a specific company, but we are very transparent over the progress done in the community. And the bad thing is that, you know, we're not industrial, so we are free, but we don't have the same amount of money that we can have uh, with the industry. Um, one main, the main difference with, um, with the YesPNet is that YesPNet was started as a kind of end-to-end -end speech recognition library, while SpeechBrain uh, which is a kind of uh, more recent project, uh, was designed from the beginning with this, this idea of having multiple tasks uh, um, to support multiple tasks natively. 
And this means that, you know, uh, combining technology with speech print is extremely simple. So what you, which is the best one? Yes, Pinet, uh, Nemo, um, Fairsec, whatever. That's that's up, up to you, up to you decide. My suggestion is try more than one and uh, just uh, choose the one that best fits with your needs. Um, what's next? There are many things with, that we would like to do. So we are very excited to 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 have a kind of improve this project in the future and expand it. One direction is most small footprint, real time, low latency speech processing. There is a huge request for that. You know, models are getting bigger and bigger and bigger, but in reality, uh, you cannot put these models in a kind of production scenario because they are too big. So there is a lot of interest towards models that are small footprint, real time, and low latency. This is a feature that we don't have now and we would like to add in the future. Uh, now, um, we also would like to scale up the multi-language part of speech uh, brain. Now we have some languages, but we would like to massively uh, um, scale that up in the future. Uh, also, we would like to work on text-to-speech. Uh, the dialogue part is very important, and it's a very, very important part right, that we would like to add um, to uh, complete the conversational AI pipeline. Uh, and of course, uh, this might be interesting for you. Uh, there is, we would like to expand a little bit the music processing part. We don't have too much. We only have some kind of simple symbolic music generation um, um, RNN, but really, really, there is no reason why we cannot um, use speech brain for uh, music processing as well. Um, if you would like to read more about speech brain, I you can you know take a look at our paper. I think here again, if you type on Google speech brain archive or speech brain paper, whatever, you will find it. Um, and of course, you can find all their um, more information on our website. I would like to thank our sponsor, um, like Hugging Face, Samsung, Dolby, Nvidia, Nuance, and Via Dialog that you know gave us some kind of funds to hire students working on this project. Uh, we are always looking for new sponsors and contributors. Uh, as I mentioned, we are an academically driven project, so we need to find um, sponsors if you would like to um, to make this um, this um, project growing. Um, so we, we just released a call for sponsors, uh, but we are also looking for contributors uh, every time. And uh, if you have some ideas, feel, feel free to uh, reach us. Uh, I also have to thank the, our you know, institutional partners, Villa, um, Avignon, Cambridge, Sherbrooke, and also Bio ASP in Taiwan. Uh, but you know the, the main thing goes to the a core development team that works so hard uh, over the next uh, year, year in and out, and uh, um, you know was able to um, to make uh, to turn a speech brain into something which uh, is re publicly released and available to the community. Uh, that's all. Thank you very much for your attention. I'm now happy to reply your questions, and let me see if, uh, in the meantime. Uh, we can, uh, okay. Can see if the, okay. Uh, yes. Yeah. Let me see. Okay, this is. Uh, okay, not sure if this is working. Let me see. Okay. So just just to complete the thing right before, I, I was uh um was uh, feeding into the, in the speaker ID system. This is... Buongiorno a tutti. Potreste dirmi che lingua sto parlando? This is just me, Grazie right? Mille. Arrivederci. It's speaking Italian and I can, you know, recognize that, you know, it's, uh, it's, um, it's actually Italian. So if I record something in English, hi everyone, could you please tell me which language I'm speaking? Thank you very much. Let me see. Hi everyone. Could you please English. tell me which language I'm speaking? Thank, Thank you very much. You now, curiously, the second language is Portuguese. Maybe it's kind of recognizes some kind of Latin <laughs> uh, behind the scene. And you can have fun with that. I, I, I think this is pretty impressive, right? Y yesterday, I tried to, you know, just, uh, just put 
there are some kind of I don't know signals in different languages and it was able to recognize correctly we are able to recognize um, to have an accuracy of a 94 percent over 107 languages uh, so I mean it sounds like at least for this that's superhuman because I don't think there are humans able to recognize languages with that accuracy uh, but yeah you can you can just play with that and have fun. All right, so now ready to take questions.